my own conclusion as to why I think my hair broke off. It wasn't a health problem. It was the products that dried my hair out so bad that it made it thin. The five things that I have learned about being natural this year. Moisture is definitely the key to growth. The second thing that I have learned about being natural is you really got to be careful what you put in your hair. Especially if you're like me and you have areas in your hair that are really sensitive or tender or prone to breakage. Just be careful what you put in your hair. And honestly, you don't really know what you're doing to your hair until you do it. And you don't know how your hair is going to react until you do it. So I just realized that, you know, my hair really doesn't like that. What the heck is going on in the back of my head? My hair did never look like this before, so I need to focus on getting my hair healthy because my hair is not looking healthy in the back right now. That's why I started doing those types of videos. And this is what my hair looked after two years of being natural. Not only was trying to be natural stressing me out, it was making me bald. Then I started to think, why the hell am I doing this to myself? This is unnecessary stress. I needed a change. Now here's part five, how being a natural hair vlogger goes from bad to worst. After coming to the conclusion that my hair thinned out due to products that cause major dryness, I thought it would be a good idea to use natural products on my hair only. Here is where I also realized that natural products can be very drying as well. And popular organic products that work for most people does not work for everybody. Crown is going to start being an organic only zone in a second. This is what's going to be going down with this. So I've been looking up ways to make your scalp feel better. It's kind of like a duh kind of situation for me that maybe your scalp needs to be really healthy for your hair to grow really healthy. It's kind of like having good soil for plants to grow. If you have really rocky, unfertile soil, your plants are going to look like crap. And the same thing with your hair. If your scalp sucks, your hair is going to grow not so well. Number one thing to a healthy scalp is a lot of water. That means that you need to be putting water on your scalp, not your hair, but your scalp as much as possible. Me and water are good. Best way to hydrate your scalp is through co-washing. Co-washing is very consuming with the braiding and detangling that goes along with it. The last thing is you gotta massage your scalp. Products that help promote a healthy scalp. Clarify your hair is by doing apple cider vinegar rinse, three parts water and one part organic apple cider vinegar. Then you rub that into your scalp, concentrating on the scalp. It helps the scalp to stay super clean. The apple cider vinegar dried my hair out every time. Tea tree oil is also really, really good for the scalp. The tea tree oil felt really good against my scalp. Aloe vera juice is a really, really good healer for the scalp. With the aloe vera juice, my hair felt really, really dry after using it. So I started to do some research on why my hair was feeling dry using these products. Maybe it had to do with the porosity of my hair. Then I started to figure out maybe my hair is low porosity, which is why it wasn't working for me. Then I started to try the heavy butters, humectants, and heat to open up and moisturize my strands. Water, glycerin, and aloe vera juice. And I put it in a spray bottle and I spray it in my hair at night and put a plastic cap on my head before I go to bed and then tie my satin scarf around that. Giving my hair like a deep conditioning treatment at night. In the morning, I would rub shea butter on my hair to seal in the moisture. But now my hair wasn't thinning anymore. Now it was starting to shed. And at this point, I was getting depressed. My hair went from this to this. From this. That is so much. To this. The back got so thin that the texture was starting to feel more for B. Though my hair was soft, it was now thin and limp. And it left me with only one hairstyle left. My best friend told me about a trip to the Bahamas that her sister was planning and asked me if I wanted to come. With all this hair mess I was going through, it seemed like the perfect way to get away from all of this. I was happy for about two seconds until the thought of my hair started to come over me. All I can think of is how was I going to wear my hair in the Bahamas? 
I would get braids and get it professionally done so I can look cute, but the doctor was convinced that tight braiding was the reason for this condition. Then I started to think, my hair never went through any of this when it was permed. Perms did thin out my hair, but never this bad. I never had to spend hours detangling and braiding. And at this point, I was tired of trying 101 natural hair suggestions that was making my hair thinner. This is how the song Creamy Crack was born. I'm about to go on vacation. And the one thing I'm thinking of is what I'm gonna do with my hair. I know if I go in the water and I come back out, my hair's gonna look like this. And then I'm gonna have to right now for my hair is either go completely bald and shave off all my hair and say forget having hair or get a perm do what she said and get a perm I tried the short hair before like really really short hair I don't want to go back to that that's not for me other option is get a perm I have a lot of good memories of having a perm so my plan is this, I'm going to get a perm and then transition back into going natural. I want y'all to know that I love my hair. I wouldn't have made this channel if I didn't love my hair. I do. I love my hair with a passion. And I know that my hair is going to snap back. So next time you see me, I'll be all the way permed up. So watch out for that. Love you guys. I finally made up my mind that I was going to relax and transition back to natural. Even though I was nervous that my hair would fall off with the condition that the doctor said that I have, which I really don't believe that I have, at this point, I didn't care. I didn't want to spend any more time on my hair. This was a point where I figured out that my natural hair does not like me. I'm a very touchy feeling, playful kind of person, and my hair wants nothing to do with that. And the sad part is, I knew this already. And mind you, I only really wear wigs simply because my hair likes to be braided, period. My hair gets tangled very easily. That's just what my hair does. My hair doesn't like to be bothered with. My hair likes to be completely left alone, so I leave it alone. The best way to leave it alone is to cover it with hair because I just naturally like to play in my hair. I love playing with my hair. That's kind of why I made this channel. I like to try different looks with it. Natural hair doesn't really like it like that. At this point, I was tired of it all. I was tired of the hair suggestions that were not working. I was tired of the tangling. I was tired of the stretching, the deep conditioning. Now, none of that was working. And because I like to play in my hair, my natural hair no longer looked like this. My hair went from super thick and fluffy to super thin and limp. 
with the middle and the back of my head thinned out, I was done. So many people I showed this to was just like, cut the back of your head and leave the front. But if I did that and I still tried all these natural hair remedies that worked and it spread to the top of my hair, I would be the saddest person in the room and I'm the one who would have to deal with it. My kinks were tired of me touching it and I was tired of my kinks. I had to do something drastic to start this natural thing over. Either cut it all off again or transition back with thinned out relaxed short hair. Then I thought about how I felt when I had my TWA. I hated it. I can't swoop with a TWA. I love having hair in my face with a swoop. That's my signature look. My hair out with a little hair in my face. That's how everybody knows me as, that's how I know me as. And when my hair was doing good natural, I even put the swoop with my natural hair and it looked good and I loved it. And life is too short to live with a hairstyle that you hate. So I took the plunge and I relaxed my hair. Now my hair relaxed was way thinner and limp compared to what it used to look like. But my hair thin, limp, and relaxed looked way better than my hair thin limp and natural here was my first attempt on trying to make a relaxed hair video so i hope you guys like still accept me and still want to follow me on my journey i hope you guys like me for more than just my hair <laughs> like i don't i really don't want to be liked just for my hair like at all i want you to i want you guys to like me for me It's my decision. I'm happy with my decision. No matter what it looks like, I love it. I loved it when it was natural, and I love it like this. And that's all that matters. I cut off all that dead hair in the back. So now it's just short. And I can deal with this. I can definitely deal with this and feel comfortable and confident. Now I was out and about with my real hair, no wigs, and actually dealing with people face to face instead of face to computer. I even went to the Justin and Jay-Z concert with my brother and his fiance. But while I was at the concert, I got this random email to do a reality show for Samsung about surviving on a secluded island. As sketchy as the email was, I told them that I was interested because at this time, it didn't matter if it was real or fake, the truth would come out eventually. They gave me three days to make a submission video, but before I made that video, I wanted to let the people who watch my videos know what I did with my hair. So I got back from the concert and now it was time to share my hair choice with the people who watch my videos. Hi guys, so as you can see, yes, I permed my hair. I took the plunge. I can't even lie and say that I don't love it because I do. You guys know what was going on with my hair and I just couldn't take it anymore. It's different when you see your permed hair looking funny or your hair is pressed and it looks funny because you could blame it on oh it's being pressed, oh it's permed so that's probably why your hair is acting crazy. You don't need to be putting stuff on your hair. It's probably because of manipulation but when you're purposely not doing that stuff and then things like that are still happening it gets very frustrating and I'd rather see my my hair permed looking janky than my hair natural looking crazy you know what I mean as you can see now that it's permed you don't see like the back as much as a problem it's just kind of like it's just kind of like it's cut like that so it's not as crazy as how it looked when I was showing you the back of my hair when I was just chilling with the rest of my hair so that's one part I like I really enjoy the fact that I can literally just wash my hair whenever I want to and it won't get tangled I love that part as well and what I realized is that the reason why I made this channel is in the first place is because I wanted to do different things with my hair and experiment with my hair and all this other stuff and it was still just getting thinner and thinner I was just like this is ridiculous my confidence was going lower. I'm trying to do a channel on how to promote healthy hair growth and stuff. And I'm thinking being natural would make my hair grow healthier. I didn't want to represent natural hair with my hair looking thin and all this other stuff. It, it like defeats the purpose of going natural. That's not going to persuade anybody to go natural if your hair is looking so terrible in the back. I don't want to fail and I don't want to not do hair videos. I've never put any heat on my hair for the last two years and for that to still happen 
it's really out of my hands at this moment. I literally dedicated like two years of my life to just going natural. It looks nice on me. I feel comfortable with my hair like this. It is what it is. I was just not feeling comfortable with my natural hair looking like that. And I really hope that you guys understand that. I was, it was really depressing me because I spent so much time, so much energy into doing my natural hair for it to still act crazy. It was just very disappointing. Literally, I would spend my Saturdays just dealing with my hair. And, you know, I missed out a lot on, like, regular life because I was just sitting my Saturdays, you know, either doing a twist out or sitting in conditioner to help rebuild my hair. It just took a lot out of me. It was just getting very, very annoying and I had to do a change. I wish I could be more consistent with my hair and I wish I could just be natural and natural only, but I can't do that. When you go to a dermatologist and they tell you there's no cure for the condition they prescribe you of and they don't know why it's, it's there in the first place, that's a problem and it's not fair. I let go of my hair. I really let it go. Whatever happens, happens. I'm happy I have whatever I have on my head. I let it go. And I think that's what God wants me to do more than anything else. And I literally have let it go. I'm not going to worry about my hair anymore because thinking about it too much is not very good for it. So I let my hair go. I put that relaxed video out and I got roasted. People were saying I never liked my natural hair, but that wasn't the case. People were saying I was a liar and a traitor and I gave up. And that wasn't the case either. I was transitioning back to natural. Then I finally figured out that putting out that video like that was the dumbest thing that I could do. Here is also when I realized that you have to be super clear about everything and assume nothing. My biggest mistake I made was that I assumed that people actually watched my videos. I assumed that people saw from the very first video I put out on YouTube that my hair journey was never an easy one. The biggest mistake I ever made was assuming that people were actually following my hair journey and noticed how hard it still was for me at times. I assumed that people knew there were many times where I had to start over from the videos I had shown in the past. And lastly, I assumed that most people could relate to my story. So when I noticed that everything was going wrong because of this video, and most importantly, I could not focus on my submission video because I kept on reading the comments, the only way that I could focus on my submission video is if I stopped the comments from coming in. I had to take down the video. And after feeling sad like I ruined my channel, I had to make this island to prove to myself that I had more to offer the world than my hair texture. I had to prove to myself that even though I love my hair and I'm known for my hair, that I am more than just my hair. Now I only had two more days to make this video and hopefully I would get picked for this online reality show. But even with limited time, I had to make sure I did everything I could to get on this island because right now it meant everything to my self-esteem. They wanted the video to show people who we are, our interests, and show them something that social media has taught us. So I showed them my personality, told them I liked hair, beauty, and music, and wore the wig that social media taught me how to make. Then the Samsung submission video was born. Samsung. Survival of the Smartest Island Challenge. Samsung. Survival of the Smartest Island Challenge. Pick Glam Fun for the Survival of the Smartest Island Challenge. Pick Glam Fun for the Survival of the Smartest Island Challenge. Puerto Rico before, but I believe I can survive on an island and do much more. So big fun, 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 fun. Samsung, survival of the smartest island challenge. Samsung, survival of the smartest island challenge. And they loved it. I got on the show and I was on my way to Puerto Rico.
Welcome back, Survivalists. Well, today's challenge is called SOS. Located in the ocean behind me are floating puzzle pieces that spell out SOS. On my mark, two teams at a time will battle head to head and will retrieve the pieces and bring them back to the beach. One team member is responsible for putting together the puzzle in the designated puzzle area, while the other team member must bring the pieces back from the ocean. Referencing your preloaded puzzle key on your Samsung Galaxy S4 Zoom, teams must correctly assemble your SOS puzzles in the quickest amount of time. Green and blue, you guys are the first to go. Four times together, so we feel really, really good together. Yeah. Team siblings. Team siblings. Three, two, one. <laughs> Got the machine. Cross it. Yeah. Come on, Mom! Come on, let's finish. Ah! Blue team, great job. Great job. We did amazing, Mert. Don't stay there, little brother. Come to me. It is between the blue team and the red team. Now, the red team, you brought in your last puzzle piece a minute and a half before the blue team. Oh. But it took you four minutes to complete the puzzle. Blue team, you are the winner at 14 minutes and 34 seconds. I told Niran that I got the puzzle and that I can do the puzzle, but actually saying that and doing it is two different things. So, so I won challenge after challenge after challenge after challenge. I got the second most amount of coconuts leaving the island. But even though I had a lot of fun in Puerto Rico and my self-esteem was back intact, the moment of truth was about to come. I was so afraid of what my hair would look like. I just got a perm, which most of the people who watch my videos thought was the worst thing to do. And I just got braids, which the dermatologist thought was the worst thing that I could do. I had no idea what my hair was going to look like. Was my hair breaking off and dying with my permed weak strands? Was I going to be bald underneath these saltwater braids? What hair products should I use now that I'm transitioning with this new growth? What hairstyles could I possibly do now? Stay tuned for part six to see how reality came down and slapped me in the face because of my decisions. In the comments below, I would love to hear your experience if you have ever went from natural to relaxed back to natural. If you ever went from natural to relaxed, how did you feel like after you relaxed your hair? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you miss your natural hair? I want to hear your experience. So please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Talk to you guys later. Bye.